What up, everybody? Instructed Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about subtracting a mixed number or fraction from a whole number. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Today, I will be able to subtract fractions and mixed numbers from a whole number by lining them up vertically. So we're still going to be using the same strategy, just looking at a little twist to these types of problems. If you remember previously, right, we have done adding whole numbers to mixed numbers or fractions. And when we lined them up vertically, all we had to think about was, okay, if it doesn't have a fraction, then I can make this zero out of whatever denominator I want. So if I'm trying to add two and two fifths, I want my denominator to be five. If you have a pizza split into five pieces and you ate zero of them, that's the same thing as saying I didn't have any pizza, right? So we never have to write a fraction next to a whole number normally but it's always really there. So I'm just gonna put six and zero fifths, right? That's the same thing as just saying six. And I'm going to line up my fractions and whole numbers just like I normally would. I like to circle my numerators. Zero plus two is two. My denominator is going to stay the same. And eight plus two is six. So the sum of six and two and two fifths is eight and two fifths, right? Pretty simple, we've done that in previous lessons. Let's take this skill that we did with addition and use it for subtraction today. But first, our steps for subtracting mixed numbers. These are the exact same thing that we've been using in our previous lessons. Let's take a look at them because we're gonna use them again today. Step number one, line up the whole numbers and fractions and circle the numerators. Step number two, we're gonna subtract the numerators. Step number three, we're gonna ask ourselves a question as we do that. More on the top, no need to stop. More on the floor, go next door and get one more. And then step number four, subtract the whole numbers. So what if we had the same two numbers, except now we don't wanna add them, we wanna subtract them. Okay, so I'm gonna line up my whole numbers and fractions vertically, right? And I'm gonna start with six. And again, all I'm gonna do is put a zero fifth right here. And the reason I pick fifths is because my other fraction was five, right? And we know the number one rule for adding, subtracting fractions is the denominators have to be the same. So I'm gonna put two right here and I'm gonna put two fifths. And then I'm gonna circle my numerators. Now this is where if you're rushing, you would make a mistake because you would say zero minus two is two. And again, I can't do zero minus two. If you have zero dollars, I can't come beat you up and take two. That doesn't make any sense. So more on the floor, go next door and get one more, okay? So this is just like what we did when we were borrowing mixed numbers, except I have a zero now. So when this becomes a five, I'm going to give my big one of five over five right here, okay? And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm getting one more and I'm turning that one into a fraction that's equivalent to one. I call that a big one. So I put this box around it, or it's supposed to be a one, but I'm not really artsy. So I'm gonna, and then again, I'm gonna add that. So now my new mixed number is five and five fifths, and I'm gonna subtract two and two fifths, and I'm gonna circle my numerators. Five minus two is three. My denominator stays the same. Five minus two holes is three holes, and my answer for this is three and three fifths. Now again, what I wanna point out right here is when I wrote this mixed number five and five fifths, that's the exact same thing as zero holes. I didn't change this, I just wrote an equivalent mixed number that I could use to subtract. Now I have more on the top and I could subtract. Okay, I didn't actually change the number, I just rewrote it and I can prove it to you. So here I have six holes, right? And maybe they're brownies even though they're kind of oddly shaped. They're supposed to be equal groups, just pretend with me for a second. So I have six holes. Well, if I just take this last brownie and split it into five equal groups, or as equal as possible, I now have five holes and five fifths. Nothing changed except I just turned this last hole into a fraction because it was gonna help me to subtract a little bit easier. Let's take a look at a we do problem. All right, here we have 12 minus one and one fourth. So again, I'm gonna follow my same steps except I'm just going to put a zero fourths. Again, I picked four as my denominator because my other mixed number had a denominator of four. And I'm gonna subtract one and one fourth. And this is where if we're rushing, we would say zero minus one is one and we'd get the answer wrong. Zero minus one, I cannot do that, right? If you have zero, I can't take away one from you. So more on the floor, go next door and get one more. So my 12 is gonna become an 11. I'm going to give that one, but it's going to turn into a fraction that is equivalent to one of four fourths. And if I had zero and I get four fourths more, my new mixed number is 11 and 
four fourths. Again, 11 and four fourths is equivalent to 12 holes. I'm just rewriting it to help me picture my subtraction and make it a little bit easier. So then I'm gonna subtract one and one fourth now. I'm going to circle my numerators. Four minus one is three. My denominator stays the same. 11 minus uh, one is 10. And the difference between 12 and one and one fourth is 10 and three fourths. Now, if you wanted to kind of mentally check your work, if the difference was 10 and three fourths, then you should be able to add one and one fourth back to it and get 12. If I add one fourth to three fourths, that's gonna give me one whole, which would make this 11. And then 11 plus my one whole would be 12. So you can kind of mentally check your work as well. Now I wanna do another we do problem with you right here. And again, this should be in your notes, right? Anytime we do a we do problem, you should be copying it down in your notes. Check the link for uh, guided notes to this video. Um, and so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up seven and zero fourths. And then right here, I'm not gonna freak out. This is just a fraction. So I can put one fourth here. And guess what? If I don't have a whole, I can put zero for my whole number, right? And now I've made sure that my fractions and my whole numbers are lined up. So I'm gonna circle my numerators, zero minus one. Again, I can't do that. So more on the floor, go next door and get one more. So my big one or my one that's gonna turn into a fraction is gonna be four fourths. I'm going to get one more. So I put my addition sign here. And so my new mix number is six and four fourths. Again, equivalent to seven holes. I'm just rewriting it to help me subtract. My whole number is still zero. And now I can circle my numerators. Four minus one is three. My denominator stays the same. Six minus zero is six. And the difference is six and three fourths. Again, if you wanna check it mentally, you can take six and three fourths, right? And rewrite it using addition. Six and three fourths plus one fourth would get you back to seven. All right, here's your you try problem. Okay, if you're new to us, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pause the video in a second. You're gonna try the problem, push play to check your work and your understanding and see how you did. If you're not ready to try one yet by yourself, that's okay. Okay, you can just do it with us as another we do problem. As we go over it, add it to your notes and continue to practice. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Go ahead and pause the video and let's see how you did. Welcome back. Hopefully you just paused it and now you're checking your work. So I'm gonna do 20 and zero eights right here minus four and three eighths, and I'm going to circle my numerators. And I'm gonna to think to myself, more on the top or more on the floor? More on the floor, go next door and get one more. So my 20 is going to become a 19, and I'm going to give that one whole to my fraction, right? I'm gonna turn that one whole into a fraction that's equivalent to one, called the big one. And I'm going to add that to what I already had, which was zero. So my new mix number is 19 and eight eighths. And I'm gonna be subtracting from that four and three eighths. Again, 19 and eight eighths is equivalent to 20. I just had to rewrite the mixed number to help me subtract this problem. So I'm gonna circle this. Eight minus three is five. My denominator stays the same. 19 minus four is 15 holes. The difference of 20 and four and three eighths is 15 and five eighths. And then you should never have to check with somebody else whether or not your answer is correct because all you have to do is rewrite this as an addition problem and do 15 and 5 eighths plus 4 and 3 eighths over here. Again, you circle just like we did. You're going to get 8 eighths, 19 and 8 eighths, and this is going to become a one whole, obviously. And so your answer is, in fact, 20. So you can always double check your work without having to rely on somebody else to do it for you. Thank you so much for checking us out today. Hopefully this was a uh, awesome video for you to watch. We'd love for you to comment, like the video. Please subscribe, join our Instructed Beats family. We really appreciate you spending your time with us today. Check out our Subtracting Mix Number song and all our other lessons. Again, thank you so much. Instructed Beats, out.